everybody. I just got out of seeing Ready Player One. I'm literally just walking right out of the theater right now. Uh, my first reaction to this movie is simply one word. Wow. Uh, this is Steven Spielberg doing what Steven Spielberg does best. Blockbuster. Visually just um, a, lot to, a lot to wrap your eyes around. So, uh, but right out of the gate, my first initial reaction for everybody right now is simply just one word. Wow. Good morning. I'm Jay of the Jay Craig Podcast, and this is Movies Over Coffee. You heard my initial reaction for Ready Player One, which was that one word, wow. Um, initial reaction is very important. You want to know how you're feeling coming out of the gate. You know, that elation, the high or the low, or whatever the case may be, it's important to have. But I've always been deceived by those initial viewings because I let the environment, the energy, the crowd, my friends, I let that all of that kind of take me over, and it becomes just a fun experience. But it's that second day, it's that next morning, the morning after, that really separates the, the entertaining movies from a good movie. Ready Player One is directed by Steven Spielberg, uh, written based on a book by Ernest Cline, by the same name, and uh, screenplay is by Zach Penn and Ernest Cline. Uh, it stars a bunch of people who I'm not too familiar with, especially the younger talent in this movie, but it does have people who I do know, uh, Ben Mementh, something or other, the, the lispy villain from Rogue One, and Mark Ryloth, uh, something like that, uh, whatever, from Dunkirk. That's uh, earliest. I'm still drinking my coffee. Um, and Simon Pegg. Ready Player One is about a dystopian world where this inventor has created the Oasis, a virtual reality where everyone goes to escape and be who they want to be. And it's an amazing world that people uh, go to. Um, the inventor dies and leaves an Easter egg hidden within this world that he announces for everyone to hunt for. And if you get, you find three keys, you will find the Easter egg. And if you get the Easter egg, you're going to get all the riches of the Oasis and you're going to control the Oasis. So um, everyone's gunning for it, but in five years, no one's found a thing. So it becomes a race against time. Um, they want to stop the corporation, uh, the IOI, the 101, from um, taking over because they are essentially an evil corporation that is uh, killing people. They want to control this thing. Um, and they have all these debt collection agencies because, I mean, literally you could lose everything in the Oasis. You could spend all your money, all your time, and then you could die and lose all your coins and everything, and you're left with nothing uh, and in the real world. And then they're going to take you over and make you keep paying for it in one way or the other. So it's there's an a lot of interesting concepts in the movie, but again, it's a race against time to try to stop the bad guys from getting the uh, the, the gold at the end of the rainbow. Now, you know, I talk about the second viewing and why it's important, and I woke up at 4 o'clock this morning, and as you see, the sun is finally coming up behind me, and uh, it... I could not stop thinking about the movie. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of visual eye candy. I mean, it's set up as an Easter egg itself because you're going to see little bits of nuggets of joy scattered throughout. So if you're in the from the 80s and the 90s, you're going to really appreciate all these little things from the A-Team van and Mad Max's uh, Challenger to uh, Ninja Turtles and video game characters. So there's a lot of really cool things going on in this movie. Um, but is the story good? The story is very good. I don't think that people who aren't familiar with the Easter eggs, are still going to appreciate it because it's a cool story. It's relevant to, to, to now. It's about virtual reality and control. And, um, you know, we have the whole internet thing happening right now. And this is kind of going along with that. So it, I think it's going to speak volumes to a lot of people. However, you okay? Okay. So it, it, it's, but I don't know if it's as a Spielberg movie, if it's going to resonate like some of his blockbusters have. I think it's going to make a lot of money. I think it's going to do very well. I think it's going to get a lot of acclaim. But it's going to be Raiders or Jaws, Close Encounters, E.T., Jurassic Park. Maybe not. But I think the story is good enough. The acting is good enough. It, the villain's a little weak because he's essentially head of a corporation. He's not that scary. But the corporation is scary in a way, right? Steven Spielberg and Ready Player One is a match made in heaven. There is no better team-up or better filmmaker for this movie because it... It feels like it belongs in the 80s, not just because of the references, because of the sentimentality, uh, like Goonies or uh, Monster Squad. It has that type of resonance um, when it comes to the characters and their plot and their plight, so to speak. So um, ultimately, it's a movie that I'm going to want to see again because I want to see all the references again. I want to pick out what I missed and, uh, and just see it again because it was fun, exciting. 
um, youthful in a way. But again, it had a great, a good story about trying to stop corporations from taking over, right? And that's kind of important these days. We got to keep that up. So uh, fight the good fight. So uh, go see it. You're going to enjoy it. Let me know what you think below. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and follow the J. Craig Podcast. Thanks for watching Movies Over Coffee. I need a new cup, and I got to get this guy to school.